Thanks. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, today is the last Tuesday in May. Um, next week will be our more formal meeting. Um, I'm not going to be able to make it next week, I don't think. So if you have agenda items, send them to Georg, the things that you want to bring up specifically. Um, so I had a few things that I just wanted to share with folks today. A little... Um, I'm gonna put something in the chat here. So um, I've been doing, if you saw last week, I sent out that weekly, the weekly document. I got a really positive response from folks on that. So this is just that brief summary of things that go on during the week. Um, if you wanna take a quick scan of this, I'll send it out. What I'll do is the cadence will be just every Tuesday after this meeting. I'll send it out. It's mostly just my own <laughs> paranoia that I just have a second set of eyes on this document, <laughs> so that if um, you know if there's a if there's an issue, people can catch it here. Um, I edited it a little bit to make it fit a little bit better in phones. If anybody cares about that, it wasn't rendering quite well on that phone factor, the phone form factor. So I fixed it a little bit, um, but. I've looked around the community this week. I think I'll do community metric software, kind of rotating those. It's a fairly long software update, but I don't think it's that much text. So does anybody have an immediate, any immediate comments on this? Silence is good. It, it looks really nice, Matt, nice job. Okay, thanks. Um, if you have any other headings as well, obviously don't hesitate to let me know. Um, happy to include anything in this in this kind of weekly newsletter. Um, it's a little easier now because things kind of stay the same, the structure, you know, so that should be all right. Um, all right, cool. So I'll get that sent out um, after after this. Um, hi, Brian. I just sent out. I this just might be. Nice to, What's that, Kevin? Oh, I, I was going to say it might be nice to publish that newsletter in the uh, the blog. The chaos yeah, so I, I think actually, I don't think you were the on the call last week. Were you on the call last week? The, no, no, I uh, I needed to take a little time off. <laughs> okay. Um, the idea was, yeah, if you could get this up somehow on the web page, that might sure. be as well. I don't know what the best way to do that would be and how to like, categorize it week by week because obviously we'll make it kind of a long list of them. I, I think the best way is probably to publish it in the blog so, okay. and publish it as a newsletter in the blog. If you could do that, that would be nice. Okay. Um, uh, other things on my... What's that? Sorry, I was just saying I'm making notes to do that. So okay. it's on my to-do list. Sorry, okay. go ahead. Thanks. There were a couple other things on my list that um, kind of indirectly involve this group. Um, because chaos is on the community bridge, we have uh, dollars to spend. And I was kind of tasked with reaching out to the board members as to how we allocate those dollars. You know, like, so if somebody had a request to use some of the funds, how we go about approving the use of those funds, whether it's for travel, for a meetup, for mentorship, for marketing, these kind of things. So the idea is that community members can request the use of funds, um, but there needs to be some process by which that gets done. And I, I think it'll be handled through the board. So that conversation has been started um, as well. So that's good. Um, is actually, is somebody taking minutes on this? Probably not. Could somebody take minutes? I would volunteer, but my internet connection is unstable, so okay. it keeps on cutting out on me. I don't know how. I, I hear that. <laughs> I hear the instability. I can, I can do it for you, Matt. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
I posted it in the chat, even if it's just really, really brief items. Yeah. Um, so I guess the first one was um, the newsletter looks good. The second one was community bridge and reaching out to the board as to how to kind of progress on that. Um, and then with respect to chaos con, these are kind of my three primary things with respect to chaos con. Um, we are going to be able to set up um, out of band registration as well. If you recall in years past, you can obviously register for ChaosCon via the main Linux Foundation registration site. But in Vancouver, we had quite a few people register out of band. Um, the only trick is, is that last year we could charge a no-show fee. This year we can't. There's something that has something to do with, uh, I think the Linux Foundation moved to a new registration system. I don't understand the details. Um, so if, even for the out of band though, we're gonna charge $0. Um, and we'll just try to keep you know, keep a close eye on who's registering and um, getting a good understanding of who's coming to ChaosCon uh, in August. So that had to be taken care of as well. And then uh, also at ChaosCon, so that's moving forward. Um, Ray, you had asked about a board member meeting and um, it looks like that's gonna be fine. I think they're just trying to figure out which room it could be in for like an hour before the keynotes. All right, cool. Thank yep, you. Stephanie's doing that. So it doesn't look like it should be a problem. So I think those were all my action items from last week. Um, so things are moving fine in that regard. Um, I don't see, I was going to see if Jesus or anybody from Google Summer of Code outside of Parth uh, was on. I, Parth, do you have any updates on what's going on with Google Summer of Code and how that's going? I think this is the first week where you actually start doing work. Is that correct? Yep. So I'm, I'm working on Augur and we're starting to port the evolution metrics on the new schema. Okay. So that's All right, cool. Um, I think last week was kind of the bonding period with some of the mentors. Um, yeah. And some of the people associated with the particular project. And I think this week is really the first uh, to start getting work done. Yeah. So I'm excited to see these things. Parth, have you been, um, do you have a blog? Are you posting that? I'll, I'll start posting this week. Okay. This week. Okay. okay. I, I just, I, per, I personally really like them because it's a nice way to get a, a good idea of what's going on with each one of the students. All right, cool. Um, let's see, are there any, yeah, here in Google Summer Code, ChaosCon registration is open. Oh, yeah. Is anybody going to register or go to ChaosCon? Ray, are you going to make it? I'll be there. So. Okay. Ben, are you going to go? I'm going to try to make it. So um, okay. I, I'm actually starting a new job here in two weeks. So oh, you are. It's kind of up in the air for me. Okay. Uh, Just in terms of Open Source Summit North America in general, even? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I really want to make it, so I'm going to try pretty hard to get there. Okay, that sounds good. Um, Kevin, you and I will talk. Andy, do you know if you're going? I think you're, oh, you're going for sure. Yes, I'm going. I know you're going. Brian, are you going? All right, sweet. Very cool. So for those of you that are going, if you would like, it would be great if you could submit a proposal to ChaosCon. I sent out that call earlier today. You've all been to ChaosCon. You know it's a pretty... <laughs> pretty pretty relaxed environment to talk about things. So whether, you know, like if it's what metrics mean at, at GitLab, that would just be great. I, if this is something you think about at GitLab, if this is something that's on the horizon, if this is something that's changing, if they're, same at Red Hat, Brian, how you're using them, how they're informing decisions, anything that you can kind of speak to, um, would be great to have it at ChaosCon. So anyway, <laughs> you make it to this call, you get a personal request <laughs> to submit to ChaosCon. <laughs> um, all right, cool. And they're only 20 minutes. I think that the talks are only 20 minutes a piece if you don't do a lightning talk. So as you know, that's 20 minutes goes quite, quick, quite quickly. Um, let's see, anything else from people? This may be a relatively short meeting. ChaosCon, okay, I'm looking at the notes. Community Bridge, ChaosCon, um, oh, the newsletter, I wanna get that in there. Uh, 
Um, I actually don't see anybody here. Andy, did you have any updates from value? From the value? Uh, let's see. Um, the big update is uh, we are, um, I think, on the verge of getting our Augur instance for the, the value group. And uh, we also um, are starting with a survey process, which is going to be an email survey going out to dozens of organizations, maybe more. And uh, we're also getting ready to start with uh, an interview uh, campaign, which is going to engage between a half a dozen and 10 or so uh, open source program offices. So that's okay. so it's basically it's R&D, whether it's a survey or interviews to try to track down what are the critical value metrics? Is that right? Well, let's see. Um, so the, the email survey is, is going to collect broad data um, on size of company, number of folks involved in uh, their program, their, their open source efforts. So it's, it's kind of, I, I guess I would characterize it as a broad data collection effort. Okay. Interviews are, are going to be more about motivation. Why are you doing this? Do you care? What are the what are the you know business drivers okay. that, that motivate your organization to uh, get into this? And and also, um, you know, both activities you know hopefully will be a kind of a community building exercise, you know, just to let people know that chaos exists and the value metrics groups exist. And uh, one of the things hopefully we'll learn is um, uh, will people you know, have an interest in, in staying connected to the information that we produce. Okay. That sounds good. So is the, is there a value angle on this, on these surveys and interviews? On the interviews, definitely. Um, the value angle that we'll focus on, you know, includes, you know, primary, primary value angle is, you know, what are your key performance indicators? You know, what are the things that it drives your investment in open source program offices. Okay. Is it to reduce cost? Is it to, is it to, uh, in, you know, get your brand out there? Is it a recruiting uh, technique that you're using? Um, and then, uh, so the first, the first question is categorization. Why are you doing this? And then second is, you know, can we get some numbers? You know, how much, how much actually are you spending? And, um, you know, are you willing to share that type of information? Okay. And, and what we hope is, by the way, is that, you know, we can use the information that we learned to guide the development of parameterized metrics. Okay. So, you know, we've, we've got metrics um, in Augur, for example, how many issues are closed over a given month. And what we'd like to do is to, you know, take that information and combine it with, for example, cost per closed issue so that we can, you know, so that organizations can, you know, get an economic value, a uh, dollar value out of these metrics. Do people have a sense on this call of how, I know that I've kind of, I've done this, some of the, the value questions years ago. And um, the answer for me when, you know, can you ascribe value to participating in open source? <laughs> the answer, at least in the back in the day, was well, everybody else is doing it, so there must be something to it. That was usually the, the answer that I got. Um, do people have a better sense that people have organizations can actually ascribe some sort of economic value? I, I can provide some insight on that. Okay. Um, so you know, I've I've worked in the engineering half of big companies for a few years now. And one of the biggest selling points we always give them is uh, the, the notion of reducing tech debt. So either you can build something on your own and hire all the engineers that you need to build it just for you, or you can participate in something bigger where other people are solving either the same problem or similar problems. And you can leverage their engineering resources um, and just build upon it with a much smaller effort um, on your own behalf. Um, so, you know, in terms of value, you know, you can, w one way you can sort of identify that is, um, you know, if it's a project that, you know, you, like look at Linux, you know, that has, it, it, I think the Linux Foundation tried to attach a value to Linux a few years ago and came up with yeah. like $10 billion or something, yeah. you know, 
Um, so, you know, if you have $10 billion available to you to build something like Linux, then, you know, you can have it as well. <laughs> or you can just participate in this project that already exists. So was there success, Ben, in the actually ascribing dollars to it? Or was it more of an abstract value argument? You, you can typically say how valuable the ecosystem is that you're a part of, but you can never really say we're responsible for a specific portion of that value. Okay. You know, so like with Linux, I can say, you know, Linux goes into like X, X dollars worth of products that our company builds. Um, and it's kind of a core component of these products. Okay. So, you know, it has an impact on, you know, X amount of dollars, but we can't, we, we never were able to, and, we, and I don't know that we'll ever get to that to a level where we can say specifically, this is how much value it creates. Okay. You can associate it with the value of the products that you're selling and just right. making the claim that this is a core component of those products. Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. And, and by the way, if anybody knows of folks who would be good candidates for our interview cycle, um, please let me know. Um, Ray has volunteered. So uh, we're going to, Put him on the schedule, uh, Brian. I'm gonna, I'm gonna approach you. So get ready. <laughs> Run away, Brian. <laughs> and um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've got folks at Mozilla, um, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna reach out to uh, some folks that I know at Facebook, uh, Google. You know, just just uh, local technology companies, people who have open source program offices, and people who like Red Hat, who, you know, actually make open source a business. Those are the two categories of folks that I'd like to um, include in the interviews. Uh, there's, a, there's a gal, I, I saw a chaos talk from um, Comcast. I'm going to try and get in touch with her. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if, if, if anyone knows of anybody else who would be interested in uh, talking to us, please forward those names to me. I found usually when I've done interviews in the past, if you ask at the end of the interview, usually people have friends who they're willing to put you in touch with. Yeah, I, I actually think we're not going to have any tr trouble at all uh, finding folks who are interested in talking about this. It's new, and the open source program office phenomena is not organized, and um, I think people will be interested in finding out, you know, what are the thoughts of their peers. In, in other companies. Well, I think just listening to Ben talk to the argument has become sharper than what it was even just a few years ago. I think so too. Sorry, I have an emergency alert system going off in the background here. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Andy. That's good. Um, any other updates from folks? Good. Good. Okay. Well, if that's it, because I don't see Augur or Grimoire Lab on here either or other working groups represented at the moment. So if that's it, we can keep it at 20 minutes. I don't think people will have a problem with that. I'm sure you will have things to do. I'm taking a wild guess. Um, also, if you're interested, don't forget we have a few other meetings coming up this week. If you want to participate in evolution or common or value, um, please do so. You'll see it on the weekly newsletter, which I will send out. Anybody has anything else? Till next time. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye.